Hey guys and welcome back to another Eye Contrast video. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different to all my other videos I think so far and uh, talk about how you can improve your pace on the F1 2018 game. Uh, this might be applicable to some other games as well. Um, my other video I made about how to drive smoother on F1 2017 I believe uh, was pretty well received so I'd like to continue on from that video and uh, just give out as many tips as I possibly can about all the things that I've learned through my experience. Um, I might not be the quickest, I'm not the slowest but um, hopefully whether you are slower or quicker than me you might be able to learn something at least if it's one thing from this video. I want to try and make this video to the point as much as possible so I'll explain where I feel I need to but otherwise I just want to try and roll on with as many tips as I can fit into this video. So let's just kick it off with tip number one. Practice makes perfect obviously you've probably heard this a million times but the more you play the game obviously the quicker you're going to get regardless of what skill level you are or what setups you run you're going to get quicker if you play the game more. Now this would actually involve learning the racing line. Many people think they know the racing line until they actually see the racing line so I'll give an example of this right now. Um, just make sure you learn the track and optimize corner entry and exit speed as much as possible to make your lap as fast as possible. Setting up the car can mean the difference between being first or last in your category or your race. It is very important to set up the car for your specific race, whether it's a long one, whether it's 50% or 5 laps. Definitely time trial setups do not work in race conditions that I know of. If you want to prepare for a long race, you're going to have to study the track and your car and how it reacts and your own driving style to suit uh, the track as best as possible for a long distance. Whereas time trial, you can go as hard as you want for that single lap, but those tires, once they go off, then you're not going to be very quick otherwise. I'm going to go a lot more into detail about how to set up the car properly in those sort of circumstances, so stay tuned for that. If your tires are overheating, you can try lowering the tire pressures. You can also try lowering your brake pressure so it puts less load on the tires when you go into braking zones. You can also change the brake bias. Usually it's the rears that are struggling, so if you move your brake bias more towards the front, it'll stop uh, putting so much load on the rear tires and balance out the amount of heat generated through the front and the rear tires. Um, when I say move it towards the front, I don't mean like oh, heaps, I mean like a, a few percentages uh, towards the front. So uh, just be very minimal with that and find the setting that's best suited to your driving style with how hard you go into braking zones. Another fun little fact is the lower your brake pressure is, the harder you, or the longer you have to brake going into braking zones. Uh, and that means the longer you spend on the brakes uh, gives more opportunity for your ERS recovery uh, system to recharge its battery. So you will get a minimal advantage from that uh, recharging aspect as well. And uh, I'm pretty sure most people know this, but uh, the fastest ERS mode in a straight line when you're reaching top speed is the overtake mode. Uh, hot lap is decent over a whole lap, but uh, on the straights, if you want to reach your top speed, overtake mode uses more battery, but it is the fastest mode uh, and therefore should be used for overtaking or defending on straights if you want to do that as well. Another thing with lowering tire pressures is that you will get an advantage of coming out of corners with increased traction. Uh, another thing is though that uh, you will lose I think a slight amount of top speed. So that is something definitely to consider and is very track dependent. When doing long races or even short races if you want to improve your tire wear or reduce wheel spin at the rears uh, definitely loosen up your on throttle differential. This helps me save my tires a lot better in long races such as leg races and I do it all the time for leg races. You can also increase that during parts of the race when you do have improved traction such as when you get a fresh set of boots but otherwise if you want to save those tires I do recommend loosening up the on throttle differential. This can especially help in wet weather conditions. Another huge tip is if you're racing in the wet raise your ride height. It makes it so much more stable um, increasing it all the way if it is full wet conditions make sure that you balance it out if it's wet to dry or dry to wet conditions so that you're not a complete sitting duck in a straight line uh, for top speed if it does become dry but in the wet uh, increasing your ride height helps a whole heap you can also try using lean mix uh, coming out of corners to improve your traction uh, mixed in with those other tips Save your fuel and ERS in the most complex sections of a track where the corners are such as uh, Sector 3 in Spain, 
uh, that way you can use it throughout the rest of the lap to defend or attack in places where you can actually potentially make a uh, overtaking maneuver rather than places where it's almost impossible. When you're leaving the pits, hold down the trigger slightly and spam your uh, clutch or release button as fast as possible to make sure that you have no delay when exiting the pits. Avoiding penalties can give you a whole heap of positions at the end of a long race, so I definitely recommend try to avoid copying penalties as much as possible, even if it means going a few tenths slower per lap. Because if you cop that penalty and it's 3 seconds, unless you've gained a second per corner cut, uh, if you've gotten warnings from those corner cuts, uh, then you're going to lose more time than you would if you're uh, losing a few tenths per lap otherwise. During qualifying sessions, you might not be able to use the hot lap mode for the entire lap, so I recommend going through the slower corners where you don't need it as much uh, to drop it down a few modes so that you can manage to use it throughout the whole lap rather than coming towards the end of a lap and having nothing on the final straight. You could also bump it up into overtake mode to gain a slight advantage on the straights as well. Uh, this is a huge tip for especially competitive racing conditions. Uh, if you're switching from wet conditions to dryers, you're going from intermediates to dry uh, conditions, if the track is still damp and you know, you're being forced onto the dryers due to tire wear or you just want to be the first one onto the dryers, definitely do not go onto the hardest compound available when you go onto the dryers. Um, they take a long time to heat up and you will be very vulnerable as soon as you go onto those tires. For the, like the pinnacle of traction going from wets to dries, you need to be on the fastest tire. Um, unless you're trying to make those tires go a longer distance towards the end, then it might be in that circumstance more viable to take a, a slightly harder compound of tire, uh, maybe a medium. But it, unless you need the hards, then otherwise go go for the softest compound of tire because they will like heat up as quick as possible in those conditions and make it a lot more manageable to drive in those uh, mixed conditions. Starting outside the top 10, especially in 11th, can give you the best strategy for the race uh, instead of going from example an, to ultra soft to soft on a one stop strategy you can make it a super soft to a soft strategy and that can make you a lot faster throughout the entire race um, rather than the compromise strategies that the guys at the front in the top 10 had to qualify on uh, with their tyres. When you know the weather forecast before starting a race, if it is wet weather, definitely underfuel the car. That way you can use lean mix more throughout corners for better traction. Uh, if it's dry race, definitely overfuel the car. Um, depending on which track it is and how much fuel you need for that track and your driving style, you might need to add a few laps extra. Another little tip is for wet weather driving, if you've got too many droplets on your screen, if you look backwards using the camera uh, just to look at the back of your car for a split second, it'll wipe all the droplets off your screen to make it clear again. If you're using the controller, you can map your um, ERS deployment MFD shortcuts to R1 and L1. I'm not sure what they're called on the Xbox, but it is the front bumpers uh, closest to yourself or the thumbsticks themselves so that you can press them in while going through a corner. So that way you can change ERS modes. And if you want to map your fuel mixes to that as well, you can also do that. So that way you can... Uh, go down through fuel mixes and ERS modes while going through a corner and then when exiting the corner you can still um, shift up through those modes and mixes as well. If you have a friend that is faster than you it's always good to have a teammate in a competitive situation that you can work with uh, so that way you can copy their setup or their racing line if you feel they are faster or there's a place that you feel that you can improve on definitely uh, something you can consider is uh, talking with your teammate or friend about how to get faster in those areas so that way you can be at least as fast as them. If you're wanting to reach your maximum potential with how fast you can go, uh, the wheel is definitely, you can't beat the wheel. The controller, it's, it's gotten worse for this game, but the wheel, if you're wanting to reach your maximum potential, you have to use the wheel. Um, you get more feeling through a controller because of the force feedback vibrations but uh, if you're wanting to be as quick as possible the wheel has better tire wear and can shift direction better through chicanes and corners that uh, involve uh, fast changes of direction better 
than the lag of input that the controller has. It may be a bit ironic for me to say that, seeing as I am faster on the controller than the wheel, but that is simply because I have not spent as much time on the wheel as the controller. And uh, if I do learn the wheel properly, uh, which I do intend to in the future, I just haven't had the time or the patience right now, um, then I will definitely become faster. It's just an inevitability uh, that I will eventually reach the same pace as the controller. Short shifting can also help a lot um, in the wet and also to save fuel. If you want to save fuel, you can also coast going into corners and braking later going into the same corner. Uh, that can help a lot with fuel saving, but otherwise short shifting is definitely a good tactic to get better traction coming out of corners, especially if you're on the wheel. I notice a lot of people on the wheel do that and then they can uh, get on the throttle better. So right now I'm going to go through setup tips, like a lot of things to do with the setup and how, what you can change depending on how the car is acting. So majority of tracks do involve a low front wing and a, a high rear wing to balance it out with the high ballast. Uh, that way you can be as fast on the straights as possible while still being able to corner. This also reduces the effect of dirty air as you do have less um, aerodynamics at the front to lose um, because there's not much to be gained. Like you're using the weight of the car, the weight distribution of the car to turn the car rather than the aerodynamic uh, ability at the front as much. Increasing the rear wing will improve your stability with uh, oversteer from the ballast if you need it, uh, although it will compromise your straight line speed quite a lot. So if the rear of the car is really unstable, increase the rear wing, or you can decrease the front wing because the front wing can also make the car very unstable if it is too high, um, so definitely lower that, um, but you will have less turn in or less cornering ability if you do lower the front wing, so it's a compromise of both really. Uh, softer suspension will allow you to take curves better, so if you have a high curb circuit like Azerbaijan, maybe you want to soften the suspension a little bit more, but if you do make the suspension a bit more stiffer, it may help out with your cornering when the tires die out, especially in a place like Singapore, I like to run a slightly higher or stiffer suspension so that way when the tires do die out because it is a high tire degradation circuit, I can still corner, whereas only a little bit though because they, they have pretty hard curves there but anyways a lot of people don't fully understand the uh, front anti-roll bar, rear anti-roll bar, that kind of thing, uh, the camber angles and that sort of stuff so for the camber angles uh, you want to make sure that you put it all the way to the right hand side if you do have a high ballast uh, if you're aiming for stability I know some tracks involve you actually turning that down and aiming it more towards the middle or the left uh, such as France if you're wanting uh, apex speed rather than just stability so that's definitely something you need to experiment with the same with the toes um, usually it's all the way to the left but you might need to increase that more towards the right in tracks such as France I also usually run a softer rear suspension than front suspension just so that it helps out my um, front end in turning in and uh, just the rear needs to be as soft as possible for me because um, if I go over a curb, I don't want the rear end to step out. And with the anti-roll bars, I noticed that a lot of people have been lowering that during races. So for the front anti-roll bar and rear anti-roll bar, usually have a, a stiffer front anti-roll bar like, or firmer front anti-roll bar than rear anti-roll bar if you have a high ballast. But for races, I noticed that gets lowered a fair bit just in comparison to time trial because uh, as the tires do wear out, you, you sort of want less responsiveness at the front and just better traction overall so it prevents the rear from stepping out due to the higher ballast. It's just about dealing with that higher ballast situation because you don't want the rear to step out. I know for a lot of tracks still, you still have pretty stiff front and rear anti-roll bars such as like Canada, I think, if you want that turn in because uh, you got those chicanes. But um, overall, if you got like a flowing circuit then yeah it might be worthwhile to test um, lowering those so that you can last longer throughout a race without the tires um, completely dying and then just spinning uh, from that butt uh, the ballast uh, completely losing the rear end uh, with the ride heights usually you have a really low front ride height such as one or two um, and for the rear ride height it's probably something like three four five uh, it's totally track dependent once again it's about uh, clearing the curbs uh, you want to try and get it as low as possible overall uh, so the lower the, you can get it without bottoming out the car going through a corner uh, that's where you want to put it brake pressure and 
uh, bias is actually pretty preferential depending on who you are and what your driving style is. I've already explained it a little bit earlier on in the video, so I won't go over that too much. And uh, we'll jump onto the tires once again. Uh, lowering, lowering the tire pressures is going to improve your tire temperatures overall. If you're running a softer tire, um, the softer tires do heat up and tend to overheat a lot easier than the harder tires. Uh, so therefore, you know, you can push harder on the harder tires but if you're aiming to uh, try and improve traction and lower tire temperatures then lowering the pressures is a good way to go about it and usually lastly for the ballast usually decrease that by one or two from what a regular time trial setup would be for a specific track I know that I think Austria is like a 10 ballast and for the race we run nine ballast I'm pretty sure something like that but uh, it just helps you know overall for race pace and improving uh, your rear stability and making sure that rear doesn't step out when the tires do go off because if the tires didn't go off then of course you'd have that one lap pace every lap and uh, you wouldn't have that much of a problem but when you're running high fuel and the tires degrade you definitely have the rear stepping out when you have uh, too high of a rear ballast um, when the weights are distributed towards the rear of the car. Stay in the slipstream of the cars in front of you whether you're trying to overtake them or not. This way you can conserve fuel, conserve ERS if you're not trying to overtake them. If you want to overtake them then definitely use the ERS and slipstream to try and make an overtake on a straight. Uh, that's basically where you can lose the least amount of time when overtaking a car uh, rather than going through a corner too wide that would involve more time being lost to the cars around you. That being said, you can also try and break the slipstream by uh, moving across to a different side of the track on a straight to prevent the person behind getting slipstream, but more, more likely than not, um, they will try to follow you and receive that slipstream regardless. Only defend when you actually need to. Defending when you don't need to will compromise your exit, most likely um, going through corners and therefore it gives the car behind a better exit than what you'll ever get from taking a compromised line going through a corner. So therefore always try to minimize defending, only defend when you're absolutely certain that the car behind is going to make a move on you um, and then that way you can lose the least amount of time in that aspect as well. If you know the car behind you is a lot quicker than yourself and you know that there's a very long time to go and you're going to lose a lot of time by trying to keep this guy behind you, it's probably a better option to let that guy through, maybe try and duck into his slipstream if it's possible and get DRS and then that way you can try and keep up with him uh, rather than losing time to the guys that are behind you that you might actually be racing compared to the guy that uh, is inevitably going to overtake you regardless. This happens a lot with strategies, say you're on a one stop and the guy behind you is aiming to do a two stop then they've got to make another pit stop and they're trying to overtake you to try and build that gap then you know you can hold yourself up and try to compromise their race or you can let them go and try to focus on the people that are on the same strategy as you but if you are actually racing that person it may be a good idea to hold them up for a few laps at least. But if you're in the dying stages of a race or it's a five lap race um, you got a couple laps left just defend as much as you want honestly like it's only a couple of laps just go for that position but most importantly make it fair when you do defend that's gonna wrap up this video thanks for watching let me know if you found any benefit from this video I know I'm gonna miss something and I'm gonna forget to record it and kick myself as soon as I upload this video but uh, just let me know in the comments if you uh, think I missed something or if um, you disagree with anything uh, and I'll be sure to have a look at that uh, but anyways, thanks for watching and hopefully you've found some kind of help from this video and I'll see you all in a brand new one.